Father God, we thank you for your mercy and goodness. We are here today in the name of your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, to hear your word of truth. May the Holy Ghost open the understanding of each and everyone hearing today's message. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello and welcome to May 8th weekly message from World Gospel Mission Church. Hope you all had a blessed week. Before we start our main message from Song of Solomon, let us read, hear, and believe the word of God from Psalm 91 that gives us strength and protection. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion, and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Today's main text continuing in Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6 and 7. Song of Solomon 8, verse 6 and 7. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death, and jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. Unto the Shilamite who had restored her first love, Solomon spoke that she was a woman rising out of the wilderness while leaning on her beloved. Meaning, she now trusts him completely as she is rising up from the world, which is like the wilderness. The Lord also speaks the same unto the Christians who have come to realize the love of Jesus Christ through all their sufferings and have restored their first love. Through the scriptures we are able to see the image of a Christian who has lived as a religious person, then repented, then received the forgiveness of sins and was born again by the Holy Ghost. Solomon said to the Shulamite, Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. Just as Solomon said to the Shulamite to engrave him upon her heart and her arm, our Lord Jesus is speaking unto the Christians, the, br uh, the bride of Christ, to engrave his words on their hearts and their arms like a seal. Christians who have received the Holy Ghost and have become the Bride of Christ must engrave all the words of God like a seal deep in their hearts, putting Christ Jesus himself into their hearts. Not only that, but it should be engraved on their arm also, so that they can do all things with the power of the word. Regarding this matter, Apostle Paul testified about it towards the Christians to put on the full armor of God. 
two places we can see where the Bible tells us about the scriptures. First in John 5.39, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. That's Jesus Christ speaking. And ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. And then in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So these two passages, we can see that we need to study and search throughout the scriptures, the entire book, rightly dividing them in order to understand who Jesus is. When God gave the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel, he said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Exodus 20, verse 3, 5, and 6. Because God had chosen them to be his wife, he gave a stern word to who betrayed that love. King Solomon, on God's behalf, spoke of how scary love and jealousy can be. Again, from Song of Solomon, verse eight, uh, chapter 8, verse 6. For love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. God loves not only the people of Israel, but also all the Gentiles, the rest of the world. He loves them so much, he gave up God the Word, the creator of all things, as a sacrifice for the sins of all the people in the world. Of this Heavenly Father's love, Jesus, the only begotten Son, God the Word, his testimony, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Jesus spoke of the greatest love. In John chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Fun fact of the day, Jesus is God, and he regarded us as his friends and laid down his life for sinners like us. Therefore, for those who stubbornly do not believe in him, love turns into jealousy. Through his prophets, God foretold how cruel his jealousy will be when he comes to judge all the nations that did not believe in him. These two passages are the pictures of the coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ at the Battle of Armageddon. First, in Isaiah 63, verse 1 through 4, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the ear of my redeemed is come. Blow ye, the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. And the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the ears of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, 
and nothing shall escape them. Joel chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. Another picture of this scenery in Revelation chapter 19, verse, starting in verse 11. The stronger the love, the more brutal jealousy gets. No matter how hard a person tries to avoid being buried in the grave after death, the grave is as cruel as being dragged into and covered up by darkness. Not only that, the grave savagely devours people's bodies and violently throws their souls into the blazing fires of hell. Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. John 13 verse 34. Apostle John also testified of this new commandment in 1 John 2, 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Jesus is the good shepherd because he alone is good. He is good because he alone is the only loving God. Everyone born into the world is unable to do good. In other words, they are all born as an unloving sinners. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied of this fact in Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And also, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Jeremiah 13, 23. Apostle Paul testified that only those born again of the Holy Ghost can love. Galatians 5, 22 to 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. In other words, only those who real realize that not believing the gospel of Jesus Christ is sin, repent of not believing in him, receive forgiveness of sins, receive the Holy Ghost and enter the kingdom of God and bear the fruit of the Spirit and love. Therefore, to those who have been loved by God through the Holy Ghost, as Solomon said, many waters cannot quench love, neither can the flood drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. In order to keep the promise unto Abraham, God planned to put the Israelites through 400 years of harsh trials under the reign of Pharaoh in Egypt and lead them into the promised land so that they would become a nation of priests in the future. God had a plan to have the Israelites take all the silver and gold that the Egyptians possessed and use it towards the building of the temple. Instead, they committed fornication before God. So Moses burned the calf idol that they made, ground it down to powder, sprinkled it all over water, and made the children of Israel to drink it. On that day, God of love became God of jealousy and killed about 3,000 of them. This is written in detail in the book of Exodus. Chapter 32. Likewise, we must not forget that Christians who are saved through the death of Jesus Christ, through God's great love, will be disciplined by the jealous God for serving mammon, serving money. If you idolize money, he will discipline you, just like the Israelites did with the golden calf idol. Therefore, Christians who have been born again by the Holy Ghost deeply engrave all the words of God on their hearts as a seal always being filled with the Holy Ghost, and always keeping the first love given by the Lord Jesus Christ till the end, only trusting in Him totally, preaching the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ to many souls. Jesus will return soon. He will come for His church first on the day of Christ, the chaste bride of Christ, before He allows the great tribulation to start on earth. 
He will then return on his second coming with the church on the day of the Lord to destroy the unbelieving world. He will then set up and rule his millennial kingdom here on earth. He invites everyone to escape the coming wrath and be with God the Father. Admit your sinner for not believing in the blood shed by Jesus. Repent and believe in this gospel how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must repent and believe the gospel with all your heart. Pray for wisdom and understanding of the Holy Bible as you study, and let Jesus lead you in truth and spirit. Jesus is waiting for you even today. The day of salvation is now and today. Thank you for joining us again. God bless and have a wonderful day.